So this is uh, GCSE Biology Syllabus Statement 251 and we're going to be describing um, the role of the phloem and we're looking at the transport of sucrose and amino acids between the leaf and other parts of the plant. So the process, I suppose we could start here with photosynthesis as you know producing glucose but plants don't transport glucose because uh, this is a reducing sugar and it's quite chemically active so what the plants do is they convert this to sucrose which is still soluble making it suitable for transport but it's a non-reducing sugar and that would make it chemically less reactive than glucose so plants will choose to transport carbohydrate in the form of sucrose it's soluble it dissolves but it's non-reactive so that's an appropriate way to transport carbohydrate the second substance that we should consider is the transportation of amino acids also synthesized in the leaf and these will be transported together with the sucrose let's just put those there as well and when transported in a soluble form they combine to form a substance that we could call sap and the sap travels through a tissue called the phloem which we'll describe in a moment so overall we should see the sap leaving the leaf and traveling through the plant to important places like for instance the buds where we're going to see growth so the transportation would have to go down the petiole of the leaf, up the stem, and up to this growth point, and to the various other parts of the plant where growth is occurring. Another significant place to transport would be from the leaf down through the stem and down into the root structure where carbohydrate, for instance, might be stored here in the form of the tuber, such as we would find in a potato. So this is interesting, so the transportation of sap can occur in a number of directions and it's possible for these directions to also reverse. So that would need to be explained in a theory of phloem translocation. Translocation, translocation is the name, the process in which sap is moved around. The tissue in which the flow moves, uh, the sap moves, is called the phloem. And here we have a cross section. So this is a cross section of a stem, sometimes known as a TS, transverse section. And this structure here is the vascular bundle. I'll just put VB here to remind us. Here's the name there, vascular bundle. Here's one, here's one, here's one, and down here. And on the inside of a vascular bundle, we have the xylem tissue in the center, the cambium. But the tissue we're interested in is this one here, which is the phloem. This is the phloem in cross section, transverse section. So looking like a set of tubes, like a set of straws, looking at the end of a set of straws this so we're looking into the end so here I've drawn a simple diagram of the phloem tissue what it looks like here's one phloem cell here's another one the connection between the cells is that the cell wall has pores in it and we call this the sieve plate between each cell in the phloem 
we have one of these sieve plates through which the sap will move. Phloem is often associated with cells called companion cells which are metabolically very active. In fact if we poison these companion cells the translocation of sap stops. So the sap is loaded into one end of the phloem and it's removed at the other end. And as previously suggested, it's possible for this movement to be reversed. So glucose is transported as sucrose along with the amino acids and this forms the sap of the plant.